How's it guys? Uh, today I'm taking a look at a game called Road to Vostok. Um, the description says Road to Vostok is a hardcore single player survival game set in a post apocalyptic border zone between Finland and Russia. Survive, loot, plan, and prepare your way across the border zone and, and enter the Vostok. Uh, uh, this game is made by one guy, which is really impressive when you take a look at the uh, mechanics and the graphics and all that so you know, it's actually quite impressive so I'm, I'm in the tutorial at the moment we're going to take a look at the mechanics because it's really quite in depth so uh, let's let's begin okay we're supposed to start here the the character has um it, it's hard to show but he has a, a kind of inertia so he he feel quite weighty like as, as you start running, it takes a while to get up to full speed and stuff like that. So let's see. Welcome one. Welcome to the public demo two. Main goal of this demo is to test the initial gameplay loot mechanics and engine performance. This demo includes the possibility to try the loot progression, trading, permadeath, and saving and loading to the shelter system. Have fun testing. Number two, settings. You can access the demo settings with escape. You can change multiple game parameters and default input settings through this UI. Custom key bindings and other values within the demo settings will be saved. If you're using a learned hardware, try testing the performance rendering mode. Okay, I have a, I have a fairly decent machine. I've got a, a, an RTX 2060, 16 gigs of RAM, and a 12th generation R5. And it, it was running really well. Uh, I've got the, the frames limited to 120, and I'm sitting on 120. You can see on the top right, uh, top left corner there. Uh, and we got high quality shadows, standard rendering, not performance. The uh, HUD displaying, map time, all that stuff. Let, let's see if we can change the weather. Oh, that's pretty cool. Rain. Yeah, the rain is affecting the performance a tiny bit. Uh, uh, let's go storm. Oh, the audio is fantastic. Oh, that still sounds so good. That's crazy. That's crazy. That's crazy. <laughs> that was a really oppressive storm. It went on. Summer. Even the birds and stuff. How's that? Yeah, but someone? That's really cool. Okay, let's check. Dawn. Day, obviously, where we were. Dusk. And night. Oh, it's quite dark. Nice. Let, let's check night with a storm. That's actually kind of creepy. <laughs> it's really oppressive. I love it. Okay, what else do we have? Okay, let's go night time. Simulate the northern lights. That looks pretty cool. Primus Night Neutral. Yeah. That's really cool. Yeah, what do we got? Music. It is the normal settings. Alright, let's carry on. Interface. You can access the interface with tab. Interface contains main UI elements such as inventory, containers, stats, and equipment. If you want more info about an item, icon, or stats, in the interface, you can use the hover tooltip. Hover tooltip activates automatically when you point to an item or other UI element. Okay, we've got our inventory, energy, hydration, all the good stuff. I got a few things there. Okay, let's see. Loot an item. All objects that logically contain storage space are loot containers that can store items. Loot is generated to these containers, and items are also physically scattered to environments. Loose loot. You can open containers, pick items, and interact with the metal mouse button. 
can find the hotkeys for managing items in the imp interface from input settings. Now there's the cabinet. I can put something in there. Pretty cool. Shows you the entire value of everything you have. So if I put, I'll nah, drop that on the floor. Pick that up. Yeah. How do you move things over? If I hold shift and click, it drops it. So why is that? One of the way to quickly move things over. Not sure. I'll figure it out, I guess. Item placement. Each item is a physical object that can move that can be moved freely in the game world. When looking at an item, you can grab the item with G, which activates the placement mode. When placement mode is active, you can scroll, or you can adjust the placement distance and rotation with scroll. You can switch between distance and rotation adjustment with the right mouse. All right, so I've got a few books here. Let's grab it with G, and we can move it around. Oops, I dropped it. I wonder if we can we can move it from the inventory now that I've picked it up. And let's drop that. And I pick it up again like an idiot. Drop it again. G. Right. Okay. Let's turn its spine facing us. And we place it down. Let's grab that one. Turn it. Right there. That one. If you right click, it uh, switches to distance. Uh, right click again and switches to rotate, which is quite handy. Let's place that down. There we go. Awesome, that's pretty cool. Item action. Some of the items can be used. And the rest, that's like the character's vitals. Items that can be used are, for example, consumable and medical items. You can use an item with the interface through item actions with the right mouse. Using takes a certain amount of time, and you can check this use time in the Harvard tooltip. Okay, so we've got our, our soup here. Raises energy and hydration. Let's eat it. I don't know about, about you, but anytime I hear eating noises like that, it just gets on my nerves. <laughs> okay, we've got a fridge, meat. Yeah. What does the meat do, actually? Raises energy and hydration, same as the soup. Yeah. Medical system is based on conditions that negatively affect the character's vitals. These conditions are presented as medical icons, and you can find them from the interface on HUD. When the medical icon turns red, the condition is active and needs to be cured by using a medical item. You can check the causes, symptoms, and cures for each medical condition with the hover tooltip. Okay, I'm assuming they mean these. Dehydration, cures, consumables, IV kit, doctor. Causes hydration reaching to zero. And then bleeding, fracture, hypothermia, burns, Poisoning, radiation, and rupture. Causes weapon damage, knife damage, explosions. Okay. They're quite an in-depth health system. You don't need med kits, bandages, tourniquet, splint. Now I've, I've picked a few of these up. There was a lot of money, and they cure a bunch of stuff. You can also see, if you look here, like a burn. Cures, lotion, bandage, med kit, IFAC, APAC, and the doctor. Ah, equipment. Equipment is the items that your character carries and equipment is linked to several important stats. Certain equipment increases your carry weight and changes the character's visual appearance. You can find equipment slots in the interface. You can activate equipment slots by moving compatible items to them or by holding ALT and then selecting the item you want to equip. Yeah, that's cool. Okay. Take carrier, a backpack, a sauna hat. A jacket, hoodie. Let's just grab everything. Yeah, I've overweighted myself. Yeah. 
Okay, well, equip all the black stuff. Parking pants. Jeans, boots, gloves. Backpack. This is a shirt. What is this? Hiking pants. I don't have a shirt on. So should we just equip the webbreaker? Equip the hat. And the black bearer. Here you got a face set, uh, slot, a light and a map slot. That. Get rid of the rest. So I need that. We are now equipped. Too bad you can't see your body, it would be kind of cool. Okay, weapons. Use a hybrid solution that combines procedural elements and keyframe animations. Weapons are equipment and they use primary and secondary equipment slots. When the weapon equipment slot is activated, you can hold primary with one, secondary with two. Once a weapon is drawn, you can holster it with the same key. Alright. Some interesting looking weapons. We have a Mosin SVD, a Remington 870, BSS, Makarov, Colt 1911, Glock 17, a Car 21, RK95, AK12, Mark 18, Sumi KP31, MP7, MP5, AKS74. Some really nice weapons here. Uh, let's pick a few. Let's grab our uh, trusty old Makarov. And what else shall we take? Let's grab a Mosin. Alright. Okay, we've got our primary and our secondary. There's the Mosin. Makarov. Weapon handling. Change weapon position with a scroll wheel. Land at aim. What if it takes it's quicker to load with its rate? No, it's quicker. Okay. Can't at aim. All ADS. Okay, cool. Uh, that's if you have a, a can't sight on. Inspect weapon. I can put on an optic. Okay, we got condition. I'm not sure what all these other things are. Okay, weighs four kilos. No, I'm assuming that's the ammo. Rotate weapon while inspecting and scroll. That's pretty cool. I like that. Uh, change the firing mode if fire requires ammo. Left mouse button. Reload requires ammo. R. Bolt action weapons and shotguns. Start and end cartridge insert with control. Oh, that is that is such a clean animation. Insert cartridge, left mark. Woo! Yeah, attachments. You can customize weapons by attaching items such as optics and pressers to them. Adding and removing attachments is done dynamically by inspecting the weapon. Once the weapon is drawn, you can inspect it with X and select attachments from the visible weapon UI. When inspecting a weapon, you can also rotate it and change the perspective with the scroll wheel. Okay, there's a PU scope, that's for the Mosin. We've got various suppressors here, I wonder if we can find one for the Makarov. That no, so common monster hybrid, I believe. These two are four five five six. The hybrid is a seven six two. The Thor, I'm not sure. It's probably a seven point six two. The Navy, I'm not sure at all. There's a longer barrel. Uh, that I think is a shotgun suppressor. I don't know what that is. And that's a PBS. That's for seven point six two AK. There's a hammer scope and ACOG. A pro, that's a red dot, I believe. EXPS, collimator, Cobra is a collimator, Micro is a red dot, and then various scopes. It's an AK scope, a Voodoo, and a Leopard. Very nice. Those are variable zoom scopes. Actually, I want to test. Oh, I, need, I need to test those. 
Let me have a... Like that. I want to look how these variable scopes look. I uh, will take the... We'll take both. And we'll take that. Okay, first of all, let's try this one. Okay, you can just stick the optic on. Um, how do you change it again? Oh, there. That's awesome. Very realistic looking scope. Let's put our Mark 18 on. Then we're going to stick the Voodoo on. Okay, we've got our Voodoo. Uh, I don't see a way to adjust the zoom. I wonder if there is a key for it. I don't see a key for it. I'm not sure if there is a, a, a zoom adjustment because this is the variable, variable zoom optic, so it should have one. But uh, let's try the leopard. Nice. I like that. Very cool. Switch back to our Mosin. That's probably how the game will start. Let's see if we can put a soak on 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 that uh Mark 18. What if you can drag things on the uh, no we'll press one muzzle now we got us a suppressor it's uh, very nice very nice cool uh, let's check a red dot Let's grab that one. Oh, it looks very nice. Very well done. Okay, ammunition. The demo uses placeholder ammo, which is compatible with all weapons. You can reload a weapon type with R when you have available ammo available in your inventory. You and check the current ammo count in the magazine through the weapon UI and interface. All action weapons and shotguns will rely on that. Require manual cartridge insertion with control on the left mouse button. Okay, 30 rounds of ammo. Let's grab a bunch. Okay. Very nice animation. That was a suppressor. It's very beefy sounding. I love it. Let's check with that one. Very nice. The, the recoil is reasonable. Okay, let's go look at our grouping. Beautiful. Oh, it disappears quite quickly. It's quite, that's a bit unfortunate. Okay, let's do an empty reload. Oh, the audio is beautiful. Just getting a bit hungry, and let's eat some more food. Our macro. Very clean animations. Very nice. The audio, the recoil, it's all, it's all very good. Guns in real life are very loud. Let's try our Mark 18 with an optic on. Oh, very nice, very clean. Let, let's try our Mosin. Very 
set some cartridges. Very cool. So you press control to open the bolt and then you left click to put the uh, around it and then you press control again to close it. Very cool. Now how do you work the bolt? Okay, you press R. Bolt while aiming. Yes, we got. Okay, we got the ammo left. Very, very cool. Alright, traders are in-game characters that allow you to trade items and equipment. The trading system is based on the utility value of the items and the game does not use money at all. Your goal is to try to make a deal that is as balanced as possible between the requested and offered items. You can start trading through the interface when you interact with the trader. Okay. The name is Generalist, 62 years old, loyalty level 1, profit margin 20%, resupply time 10. He's got a Glock, an AK Mosin, upgrades, selling backpacks, gloves, jacket, duct tape, matches, books. Very interesting. Raspberry juice. Let's trade some raspberry juice for a meal. With my offer is, is worth 100, this is worth 60. I wonder if we can throw something else in there. That's worth a hundred. That's very expensive. Twenty-five bucks. Let's add that in. I'll I'll, I'll take that. That's a good deal. Great. Right. Oh. Move that. Let's put our shiny new gloves on. Very nice looking gloves. And let's drink our juice. Drink. Beautiful. Okay, how do our new hands look? Very cool. Very cool. Okay, AI. The demo uses an AI spawner that endlessly spawns enemies to the game maps. AI is based on horizontal difficulty. The more east Bostock you go, the harder the AI becomes. There are three categories of AI in the game. Bandits, easy, area five. Guards, medium, borderline, military, hard, Bostock. So this, I'm guessing, is a bandit. Very nice looking model, very detailed. And then, this is, I'm assuming, what, what did I say? Guard. That's a guard. He has a military rifle. Looks pretty geared up. And then we have a military. AK-12. Chest rig, all the good stuff. Okay, maps and transitions. The game world is divided into three areas called Area 5, Border Zone, and Bostock. This demo contains five maps, and you can move between these maps using transitions. Trans transitions inside the maps look like this village shipyard. Okay, shelters. I wonder if we can press. No, there's no map when you press M. Okay. Shelters are safe areas that allow you to save your progress and loot. This demo includes one shelter called the Attic, and you spawn there when you start a new game. If you die in the maps, you will lose your current equipment and inventory items. Everything you leave in the shelter remains saved, and you can respawn there even if you die. 17. Bostock. Bostock is a high-risk, high-reward area where death results in the loss of all progression. Bostock maps are permadeath maps, and if you die in them, you also lose all shelter-related save files. When you enter Bostock maps, a red permadeath skull icon will appear in the upper corner of the screen. When this... Red skull archon is visible, and if you die, you lose everything. So basically, welcome to Tarkov, welcome to Bostock. Uh, water and swimming. Some maps contain areas of water that require swimming. When you go near water or fall into it, you can activate swim mode with the middle mouse button. When you are in the water, UI elements appear on the HUD that tells you about the oxygen level. When you want to leave the water, deactivate swim mode and then you can move normally again. 19. Feedback. This demo still has a lot of unfinished features and things that are placeholders. However, all feedback is really important and helps 
the project move forward. If you want to give feedback, you can use social media or a separate feedback form through Road to Vostok website. Okay, road to Vostok.com forward slash contact. So when you enter tutorial, when you're done, you can return back to the main menu through the demo settings with escape. You can also end the tutorial by using transition that says main menu. Thank you for your patience with the tutorial and good luck with survival. Yeah, let's, let's have a look around a bit, see what's what. And look around. This one's got some boots and stuff. Got some loot. Pick up a guitar. I wonder if you can play it. That would be super cool. <laughs> no way. <laughs> I've tried a guitar before, but it isn't very difficult. Right. Okay. We have some garbage, a harmonica even. Okay, very cool. A jacket, meat bandages, all the good stuff. A corpse. He has a top. Why does he have a top? Miscellaneous items. And hiking pants. Oh, okay, what else do we have to look at? I wonder if we can light this candle. We can! Very cool, very cool. Okay, I actually saw a fire around here. A barrel fire. Oh, look at that. Nice shadows, nice lighting. Decent looking fire. Go look back here, I see some more dead people. Some random trash. Another fire. Looks very cool. Another bandage box. Oh, there's we can hide the swimming. Looks really cool. Swim mode off, oxygen on. You can go beneath the water. It's quite dark down here. Wow. Getting kind of cold looking at this water. <laughs> Alright, you can't jump. Okay, cool. Alright. Crouch. Can you prone? I don't remember if you can prone or not. Crouch, no prone. I think that's something they should include. Would be nice. I wonder if it affects your aim stability. Let's check. Doesn't look very different. Cool. Then back to the menu. And then to that, um, I'm gonna leave this video here. That was the tutorial. Um, in the next video, I will play the game and we shall see how that goes. I'll probably die a lot, but we'll see. Alright. I'll see you guys in the next one. Cheers. Take care.